I've never seen a dude successfully fail upwards as as consistently as Keir Starmer, okay? Gifted Labour a steady 30-point lead over the Conservatives and a with a wet napkin, a wet noodle in charge of the Labour Party too. Remember, Keir Starman, Starmer absolutely sucks. So that's how bad Liz Truss was. And I'll be honest, England deserved this, okay? The UK, you deserved it. Not many of you in the UK will disagree with what I'm, what I'm saying here, but it's, it, it's almost identical Another to the American story of Bernie Sanders. You had a wonderful person who was genuine, who was a decent human being, who had too big of a moral compass. Sure, there were some flubs within his campaign within the Labour Party, and I'm, of course, talking about Jezza, the Jezza, okay? The, the Corbin himself, the man, the Some myth, the legend. Love you. He was incredible, he was wonderful, and he was too good for, this, uh, too good for the UK. And they ousted him, they destroyed him, they destroyed his reputation, and then repeated, uh, and then basically put Keir Starmer in a position of power. Keir Starmer is a neoliberal labor uh, uh, representative. Check out Top of the Hour Bot. 929 out of 10. Let's fucking go, dude. ASAP WAP, thank you for the five gifted subs as well, by the way. Um, so, so now here's the situation at hand. Apparently single-handedly crashed the UK economy. The I UK's borrowing costs, it. which used to be among the lowest in the G7, have spiked to historic highs, forcing a desperate intervention by the Bank of England. And the UK all of a sudden looks worryingly vulnerable to a full-on financial crisis. Now, that's a lot to understand. And we've seen people in the comments, especially from outside the UK, asking how this has all happened, how it went wrong so quickly. So in this video, we're going to try our best to explain well, how all of this happened. How in literally the space of a month, Truss has turned the UK from a low growth but stable Any economy into the basket has case left, has right, has it's stopped. apparently become. Well, I'll tell you why. I'll tell you how I will. We're going to start this story with the Conservative leadership election to replace Boris Johnson, which began in mid-July. I'll tell By you why I will. Conservative HD, MPs HD, had HD. narrowed down the field of candidates to just two. Then-Chancellor Rishi Sunak, an old-school fiscal conservative who essentially represented the moderate wing of the party, and the then-Foreign Secretary, Liz Truss, an avowed libertarian who made her name among the Tory right, membership by taking WTF conspicuously happened. hawkish positions on all things Brexit. Now, it's worth noting that during this time, Truss wasn't particularly popular with either the general public or conservative MPs. As for in most successful libertarian, I know. I mean, oh, boo-hoo, oh. right? Fucking Liz Truss, man. Um, also, here's another classic Catholic Brandon, Dark Brandon Rises meme. Excellent work, Agent Trust. The Queen is dead, the British economy is destroyed, and the Tory party is in shambles. You can resign now. You've done your fucking job. That's right, One, ladies two, and gentlemen. Three, four, Dark Brandon four. rises once again. From the moment that he first said, BBC, I'm Irish, to the last breath he'll take in office, Dark Brandon has decided to strike the first blow of the death toll, of the death knell of the British Empire. Secretary, her approval rating with the general public sat steady at about negative 10%, and not that many MPs voted for her in the runoff rounds of the leadership election. In the final round, for example, Truss got only 113. What? Official offline chat wide hardo. You still support kids being raped by Roger? What the fuck? Brother, where? What the fuck? Dude, you are. I don't even know what to say to like two months. Love you. I don't even know what to say about these asshole. dudes, bro. Take your medication, dog. What the fuck's wrong with you? You should not be online right now, my friend. You should be seeking help immediately. And if you haven't taken your meds, you should be taking your medication because you are your you are posting some insane shit in the chat. Deal. Okay, here I'm gonna ban you for your own good. Like, I get it. A lot of people make stuff up about me, and then they come into the chat, and they're like, well, you know, you're a bad person. You love Vladimir Putin or whatever the fuck. But some of them actually unironically turn into, uh, you know, Brexit they just, like, break their brains. 
Holy fuck, dude. Jesus Christ. Votes representing barely 30% of all MPs. And it's worth saying that even that number likely overstates how real support within the parliamentary party. Because like some of those 113 no MPs will have so supported her knowing that she was likely to win the membership vote and therefore were primarily voting for her with the hope of getting a job in her government as a reward for their support. Nonetheless, Please, sir, while Trump wasn't have very a popular with position, MPs yeah. or the general public, Truss was very popular with the conservative membership, regularly topping conservative home polling and maintaining an approval rating of above 50%. While Sunak was originally popular with conservative members, after his national insurance hike and perceived disloyalty to Boris Johnson, he quickly became one of their least favorites. Regardless though, the final rounds of this campaign- I just, so the, the funniest thing is that these are like between the party members, right? And obviously the broader population has like a, a genuine disdain, but What's hilarious about this is that like Boris Johnson was able to withstand a lot of this for many, many years, regardless of the fact that he is just as big as a demon as these people are, maybe even more racist as a matter of fact. Like Liz Truss is more of a lib than anything else where she's like, and I mean liberal in the sense that like, you know, she has right wing economic perspectives, maybe not as much uh, on the racism side. You know what I mean? Like, she doesn't hyper-focus on that shit. Boris, on the other hand, straight up was, like, insane. Like, I mean, he, he was just balls to the fucking wall. But that kind of weird uh, right-wing populism, and but, but what I mean by that is, is just, like, straight-up, open, unhinged uh, racist takes, made Boris Johnson uh, uh, withstand the attacks regardless of his uh, Tory party-backed austerity measures, right? Like, they just, yeah, they, they just thought he was just a bumbling fool, and uh, they saw him as, like, a lovable bumbling fool. And Trust was batshit, too. I mean, of course, she's a Tory. I'm not saying she wasn't right-wing conservative. I'm just say, stating that the, the main message for Liz Trust, the main thing that had staying power for Liz Trust at a time when, you know, there's the railway strikes that are looming, that are uh, slated to restart once again, and, uh, you know, she has taken over uh, a, a, a suffering conservative party was the immediate Thatcherite economics, uh, Thatcherite uh, economic proposals that she tried to state to implement. And that was what was leading the papers. That was what was leading in the papers. That's what people were talking about. They saw her as a as a neoliberal uh, wannabe Thatcherite at a time when uh, the, the British economy was already fucking up. If they had saw if they had seen her as like a racist, that probably would have played a significant advantage in uh, at least the Tory uh, audience and the party membership. Because then you're not focusing on the econ aspect, you're not focusing on the austerity, you're not focusing on the tax cuts for the extremely wealthy, right? Because then everyone is only talking about how racist uh, she is, and that as uh, as a tool is successful when it comes to uh, drawing support from your membership. ...between Sunak and Truss were primarily fought on the issue of tax. Truss said that she cut taxes across the board, while Sunak accused her of fiscal irresponsibility and said that her policies would exacerbate inflation, forcing up interest rates and mortgage costs. It's worth watching what was actually said during the campaign, too, because, well, in retrospect, Sunak looks impressively prescient. Pressing economic priority for the new prime minister and the new government is to grip inflation. We cannot make it worse. Inflation is the enemy that makes everybody poorer. It erodes your savings. It erodes your living standards. It means that those of you that have mortgages will see your interest rates go up higher and higher. That's a proper fit, but it it. Let's be right then. And yes, I'm talking about Sunak. Yeah, he's good looking. So I don't think the responsible thing to do right now is launch into some unfunded spree of borrowing and more debt. That will just he's make paying. inflation worse. It will make the problem longer. Let's be clear. We have inflation <coughs> because of our monetary policy, that we haven't been tough enough on the monetary supply. 
That's the way I would address that issue. Okay. But it is wrong. Interest rates up. Mortgages nightmare. Yeah, it is. It is. No, well, we, look, we, we, Liz, we have to be honest. We, we well, have to be honest. honest. But borrowing your way out of inflation isn't a plan. It's a fairy tale. Nonetheless, Truss's pre-existing popularity within the Conservative Party membership and her tax-cutting policy programme eventually prevailed, and she won the final round of the contest with 57% of the members' vote. As a result, she became Prime Minister on September 6th, but her policy agenda was almost immediately delayed by the death of the Queen, which happened just two days later. This period- Yeah, after she met with her, remember? The Queen took one final meeting. I will never let anyone live this down. The Queen took one final meeting, okay? And that was with Liz Trust, a diehard, lifelong anti-monarchist, okay? For all of her faults and failures, for her obvious disdain for the working poor, she was definitely an anti-monarchist. Like openly t talked about it, and uh, in in college, and there's m many interviews that she's conducted on it. And then the queen died shortly after. Period of mourning then lasted until September twentieth, with Parliament resuming on Wednesday, September the twenty first. However, on that Wednesday and Thursday, Truss was preoccupied by the annual UN assembly, which was being held in New York. Then, on Friday 23rd, Truss arrived back in London, just in time to watch Chancellor Kwasi Kwarteng deliver the much-anticipated mini-budget. This mini-budget included a whole load of pre-announced tax cuts, but also a whole load of surprise tax cuts, too. All in all, these plans were set to cost That's the That's my favourite, it is. Surprise is tax cuts. <laughs> surprise tax cuts, my favourite. <laughs> about $45 billion. On top of this, Truss refused to publish the Office of Budgetary Responsibilities analysis into her plans and didn't commit to any spending cuts in order to fund them. As a result, the markets balked at these unfunded, unannounced and unsupervised tax cuts. And by Friday afternoon, the pound had plunged to a 37 year low against the dollar of $1.09. And to make matters worse, borrowing costs also spiked, with the yield on 10-year gilts jumping from 3.5% to 3.8%. In response to this, Redfield Wilton polling found Labour was still 10 points ahead of the Conservatives, although Truss was still a couple points ahead of Starmer on Best Prime Minister polling enjoying an approval rating of positive four. Then trading closed over the weekend, which meant no more movement in either the pound or gilt markets. But there was public outcry over the fact that certain measures in the mini budget, like the reduction of the top rate of tax and the removal of restrictions on bankers bonuses, seem to disproportionately benefit the wealthiest in society. As such, with public sentiment souring, Labour's lead widened to 13 points, and Starmer opened up a four-point lead in Best Prime Minister, with Truss's approval rating falling to negative six. When markets reopened on Monday 26th, the pound fell to a new low of $1.04, and 10-year gilt markets spiked even further to 4.3%. By Wednesday, gilt markets had climbed to a new high of 4.5%, in part because pension- If you're making Starmer appear popular by comparison, you have fucked up, okay? This guy is a real wet noodle, okay? Even during the fucking railroad strikes, he failed to adequately criticize the motherfucking Tory government. Even after Boris Johnson imploded the Tory government originally. Like- I've never seen a dude successfully fail upwards as as consistently as Keir Starmer, okay? Labor Party implodes. There's like the anti-Semitism allegations. We find out that that was actually internally uh, created, cultivated, and also uh, was not addressed adequately specifically to fucking send off uh, uh, Jeremy Corbyn, okay? Labor Party then chooses Keir Starmer. There's not a lot of, uh, you know, there's not a lot of hope for the prospects of the, and the future of the Labor Party. People are leaving the Labor Party. They're saying this fucking sucks. Then Keir Starmer 
very <laughs> Keir Starmer is just so woefully inadequate. Okay, because his job is not to actually win. His job, much like the Democratic Party, is to just maintain stability and also consistently lose to the Tory party as they try to put on a strong front. He has shown time and time again that he's not necessarily on the side of labor. He doesn't really give a shit about anything. And on top of that, he's not even an effective politician. Everything that has happened so far has happened because the conservatives, the Tories, have been blowing their own shit up over and over again. I don't understand I do not understand how lucky the Labor Party has gotten. I don't understand, like, I feel like our Republicans would never do this. They would never, our Republicans would never uh, uh, allow for this level of, like, incompetence to, to thrive within its party. Like, they know how to whip their ranks, you know what I mean? You're saying Papela, but, I mean, look, look at the candidates. I think, look at the candidates. Look at the candidates they're putting out. Even if they have dog shit candidates, they still have a way of, like, controlling the media and they still have a way of effectively ensuring that like even their dog shit candidates who barely can put words together like Herschel Walker perform adequately. Herschel Walker should get no more than 10 points in any normal election. Okay. Meanwhile, he's close. He's like a, almost in a, in, a, in a fucking, he's in striking distance of winning the Georgia Senate leader, uh, not Senate leader, sorry, the Georgia uh, Senate seat from Herschel Walker, who is and has been fairly popular in Georgia. ...funds were stuck in a guilt-selling doom loop, and the Bank of England was eventually forced to intervene with a £6.5 billion emergency guilt-buying scheme. Now, this provided some temporary respite, but Truss still refused to U-turn on any of her mini-budget policies. And after a series of disastrous local radio performances on Thursday, guilt markets started rising yet again. By Friday, YouGov polling gave Labour a 33-point lead over the Conservatives, which certainly isn't good for Truss. Now, oh, Raphael Warnock is a, is a relatively popular uh, person. Sorry, not Herschel Walker. Herschel Walker is just an idiot. All right, let's Redville continue. Wilton polling did look a little better for her. Labour only had a 17% lead. But in that polling, Truss was still seven points behind Starmer as best PM and had an approval rating of negative 14. Then on Sunday, October 2nd, Truss went to the Conservative Party conference, which is usually a pretty easy affair for new party leaders. Unfortunately for Trust, though, the conference was chaos. It began with a whole load of MPs, most notably Michael Gove, criticising her changes to the top rate of tax. And by Monday, she U-turned and reinstated the top rate of 45%, claiming that it had become a distraction. Unfortunately for her, though, this failed to placate the markets largely because this only amounted to about £2 billion of the £45 billion worth of tax cuts. Obviously, the optics here aren't great, though, and by the end of the conference, Redville Wilton had Labour on a 28-point lead, with Trust 20 points. She tried to go full America, by the way, which is really funny, and you can never go full America. Like that, What she tried to do was literally what Republicans do all the time, Complain about the budget shortfall, complain, complain about the deficit, and then offer the fattest tax cuts to the wealthy. Donald Trump did this, and America was like, thank you. You are literally the greatest. Ronald Reagan did this, and he's hailed as one of the greatest presidents of all time by Republicans and even by some liberals, okay? That shit, on the other hand, did not fly in the UK, partially because the UK is not America. They blew a 13-colony lead. We are the ones who control the, the financial, uh, the entire fucking uh, global finance through the dollar. We can make moves. We can make money moves on the dollar that the UK cannot. She thought she was him. She thought she was uh, uh, Hemi Neutron. And it turns out she was not. Behind Starmer as best prime minister and on an approval rating of negative 44. The lowest ever recorded for a sitting prime minister. A day after returning to Parliament at PMQs on Wednesday 12th, Truss ruled out public spending cuts to fund the tax cuts, which spooked the markets yet 
Fuck. Ethan was suspended, by the way. A few white supremacists successfully lobbied YouTube to suspend me, a Jewish dual citizen of Israel and USA for anti-Semitism. Ben Shapiro and friends can virtually sing all they want, but ultimately they are the ones platforming dangerous anti-Semites. All I did was point it out. Brother. In a desperate attempt to appease them, on Friday, Truss sacked Quarteng and replaced him with Jeremy Hunt. Then on Monday, just three days after his appointment, Hunt made a statement which basically reversed all of the mini-budget. And in direct contradiction to what Truss has said just a few days earlier, he warned that spending Adam cuts Kirsten. would be needed. While this did calm the markets, with her whole project in the bin and Hunt clearly in charge, Truss's approval ratings fell to negative 61%, which for context is about the same as Prince Andrew, who's on negative 65%. Worse still, polling suggested that Labour had a 36-point lead and Starmer a 47-point lead on Best Prime Minister. This means that since the Queen's mourning period finished a month ago, Truss's approval rating has fallen 66 points, or just about 17 points per week. She's also gone from being 10 points behind Labour, which would translate to about 220 seats in the next general election, to being 36 points behind Labour, which, according to the Electoral Caucus, would mean literally one seat for the Conservatives at a general election. In other words, she's lost roughly 55 seats a week, or <laughs> 10 seats every <laughs> day. Now, while this result is unlikely to ever happen, it's hard to see things getting much better for the Tories anytime soon, especially given that they're about to commit to a- That's not true. I can think of a different way that the Tories could make a killing. Turn it around if you know what I'm saying. I, I don't know. I don't know. That's right, love. Here comes Boris. Bring back Boris. Bring back Boris. We love Boris another round of austerity. All in all then, with her key promises failing, her agenda chucked in the bin, and a new proxy prime minister in place, it's easy to see why some are questioning why Truss is even still in number two. Oh, by the way, if you think that that's a joke, what I just said, you're very wrong. Boris Johnson is weighing up a stunning comeback, allies say. That's right, Boris Johnson the most favored son of the Ottomans, okay? Boris Johnson appears to be on the verge of attempting a stunning political comeback. Allies of the former UK Prime Minister, who resigned in disgrace only three months ago, believe he will stand in the leadership contest that will follow the resignation of his uh, successor, Liz Truss. Uh, two sources who worked on Johnson's last campaign for the Conservative Party leadership in 2019 said he would run again this time. Multiple allies have made the case that Johnson could be a unity candidate who could bring stability to the country despite being forced to quit in July after a series of scandals made his position untenable. Asked how they could justify Johnson standing to be Prime Minister again, one MP who campaigned for Johnson in 2019 leadership campaign told CNN, Socialists will destroy our economy, and if you don't understand that, then I genuinely fear for our future. Another MP who supported Johnson in 2019 said he was only the only candidate who could comfortably win uh, over both Conservative MPs and members of the Conservative Party. Party. Now, of course, socialists will destroy the British economy, even though uh, nine, well, 10, 12 years of austerity led by the Tories have certainly led to the economic collapse you're experiencing. They are the ones who keep fucking up the economy and then turning around and saying these socialists in the shadows are going to be responsible for the inevitable demise, even though we are the ones doing it, which is funny when you think about it. How crazy. And how similar, too. It's like, oh, man, listen, you don't understand. Socialism will destroy the country. It's like, brother, you're the one who's leading, though. What the fuck do you mean? Guys, I know we're fucking long-dicking the economy, okay? I know we're long-dicking the economy currently and have been for a while, but holy shit, imagine if the socialists came.
I mean, that would be crazy. Oh, maybe it wouldn't. You don't know that. Zani almost took a second to drop the accent there. It was sticking a bit. You mean, what do you mean by sticking? You happen to mean that it was my real accent that I've been hiding for many, many years as I portray myself as an Ameribu, as one with the American population. That is my real voice, yes. The, the Tory, the Tory voice is my real voice. Yes, Ethan Klein has been suspended from YouTube I did predict Ethan's ban. That is right. All right. Yeah, I mean, blah, 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 socialism, blah, blah, blah. The real reason is because they love Boris. They think Boris would be more popular. And I do think that they are right. Um, Is it a perma or temp? I think it's it's probably going to be a perma. Yeah. And it wasn't the leftovers episode that got him suspended. It was the prior one. The ten. Regardless, as Truss and Hunt are quickly discovering, we live in an increasingly complex world where things are feeling less stable, especially economically. So it would be great if politicians were better at well, decision making and finance. And they could do exactly that. No, I didn't say perma. Someone else in the chat said perma. I'm not saying it's perma. By one week, up one, week one week, one week, one week, one week. This platform where you can learn everything from quantum computing or algebra to logical decision making, a skill many are severely lacking at the moment. Now, Brilliant's logical thinking course might start simple, but it builds, teaching you logical reasoning skills. Oh, did I say it? I'm sorry. Uh, I I was reading a I was reading a chatter. Uh, it's one week. I meant it's probably not a perma, but no, I know what it is. It's one week. Uh, hope next week, uh, episode with Andrew can still happen. No, it can't happen anymore. Oh, unless we get back. No, I, they banned him after, so I don't think they'll, we'll be able to shoot leftovers. Too late, bro. It's already on Mogul Mail. Dude, he's going to be so fucking anti-Ethan because he's so far right. It's crazy. I have improved PMQs slightly.